apologize, but I have to tell you that he told us that IKEA tries to open 10 new warehouses in Germany, but it is not possible because the lender, the, the states, have still some means test. And they say, sorry guys, we don't need any more uh, uh, furniture warehouses here in our, in our country. So my question is, this is only one example of the thresholds for trade that we still have within the uh, inner market. My question is, do you see any signs that member states are prepared <coughs> to remove these thresholds? In, in, and also, if they are prepared to implement uh, the service directive, for example, because many of the companies, many of the uh, SMEs are uh, active in the services sector, and there is a great potential if we would be able to implement the directive. Sorry. Sorry, our next speaker is from Slovenia, uh, Ms. Alanka Pavlic. If I have that right. Allow me to briefly present the view of the Slovenian delegation on the issues under debate. In this respect, I will focus on the Entrepreneurship 2020 Action Plan, which was released by the European Commission this January. The communication lays a rather great emphasis on the establishment of companies. I believe that in Slovenia, as well as in the European Union, there are currently no major obstacles to establishing companies, but what persists is the challenge of growth and business creation, and a successful appearance and business operation thereof on the wider internal market and even more importantly on foreign markets. The growth and business creation on distinct markets is actually one of the key challenges in the context of which Slovenia is currently preparing a measure with an efficient structure of forces of finance to support the overall restructuring of prospective businesses. Thus, the measures for the creation of a bad bank will be supplemented and correlated so as to positively influence a speedy and sustainable recovery of the economy. It is true that the action plan mainly includes long-term measures, the effects of which may only be seen in a few years. However, we consider these as an appropriate tool for achieving the set's objectives. In this slide, we particularly welcome the fact that the action plan is also intended for the countries such as Slovenia, which were most severely affected by the crisis. In this particular framework of soft measures, we will modify and upgrade the concept of supportive environment in Slovenia, which will also be reflected in the new supportive environment for Entrepreneurship Act. Moreover, we have prepared an SME test serving as economic impact assessment, which will enable a qualitative preparation of legal framework and the establishment of a more supportive business environment. I believe that proposed measures at EU level are the right path to achieving the set objectives in this area. Slovenia needs stability, jobs and growth. Thank you. Our next speaker is, I hope we get this name right, uh, Deputy John Lane. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, it's mainly a comment followed by one uh, question at the tail end of it. Um, last night, I had the, the privilege of sitting next to Trina uh, during our dinner in Dublin Castle. And again, this morning, um, I particularly had the privilege of sitting here listening to you, Trina. And as somebody who uh, works on a committee that deals with jobs, enterprise and innovation, you really made the penny drop for me this morning around what it really means to be an entrepreneur. Um, because while you were speaking here this morning, I began to feel enthused. You began to show me something in a new way, and that's what entrepreneurs do. They begin to get us to see sometimes old problems with a solution to it, and sometimes they come up with ideas that we would never have thought of before. And I think that the most important thing that I'm taking away from this session here is the need for us to think differently. And I do believe in Ireland, um, you know, we are thinking differently, particularly around enterprise and innovation, and how we are creating a different type of economy in order to, to um, breed um, that sort of uh, stability for people to, to allow SMEs and entrepreneurs to grow. But the question is, um, on the think differently aspect, what else can we be doing to think differently in Ireland and Europe? Uh, thanks, John. Uh, next, we have Mr. Francois Brates um, from France. Brates, did I pronounce that right? Mm -hmm. 
Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Chairman. The Minister was talking earlier about the provisions we're setting up in France, the public investment bank, which has been set up for access in all the regions, especially for SMEs. Now, of course, for SMEs in particular, uh, those looking to industry, well, it's sometimes difficult to find long-term financing. Um, in investing over a long time uh, from startup, clients uh, don't always uh, pay out properly or they pay late, so it's difficult for the banks to be the treasurers. Now, is the European Commission thinking in terms of uh, dealing with SME set up differently uh, for the case of industry um, than when it's a case of services, especially uh, given this issue of long-term financing. Okay, thank you for that. And um, before we turn to the top table, have we any more questions? Um, our minister has to leave, so it will be our last chance for questions. Are we okay? Okay, that's grand. I just add, uh, add in one of my own, um, mainly to the, our three guest speakers. In our recent report we've done on our own committee here at the Rock, we included a, a recommendation that we'd have a specific fund for youth entrepreneurship. There would be money specifically ring-fenced uh, to feed into youth entrepreneurs. Uh, I just wonder, would you can we get, get your thoughts on that as well? And my co-chair, John Atofi, wants to... Um, well, I, I just wanted to ask a question about, um, you know, is it very important at the same time in, in encouraging entrepreneurs to make sure that we have entrepreneurs in the areas that we need them, in particular in terms of uh, science and technology um, and jobs which are, you know, environment or uh, products that are um, environmentally friendly, so environmental goods and services and things that will improve people's quality of life? Uh, thanks, Joanne. We'll turn to our Minister, Richard Bruton, first of all. Yep. Uh, well, thanks very much. I, I think a, a very interesting range of, of questions. Um, I mean, I, I think just taking our, our Swedish um, question, there's no doubt that you know the implementation of the Services Directive has left a lot to be desired, and I think one of the committees of the European Parliament has done work on, on how that might be accelerated. I mean, there are offices in each of the member states to try to um, assist uh, in its implementation, but. Uh, I, I, I think we have a long way to go. I think they say 2.6% of GDP is the potential that's out there to be exploited. Uh, so I think there clearly is resistance, uh, uh, and I think that's a, a challenge, an implementation challenge. Um, our, our Slovenian question raised issues around the restructuring of businesses that have got into trouble. I mean, this is a very acute issue, as you can imagine, in, in Ireland, where we have a lot of basically viable businesses who made a bad property play, and the bad property play is now threatening the survival of the of the good business and is certainly uh, restricting its capacity to, to grow because of that, that problem. I think that's going to be a really challenging one to, to untangle that. We are now moving to set standards, to set targets for our banks to seek to unravel these sort of uh, problems uh, on, on a consistent basis. Uh, it is one of the risks after a banking crisis that, you know, the banking system while it may be recapitalized, it doesn't come to terms with, with those businesses or indeed households uh, who have got out of de their depth. And I think that's going to be one of the challenges that we as a government face, and I'm sure it's, it's shared in other countries that have had uh, collapses of, of that nature. You also raised the issue of the ease of establishing companies, and, and that's something that we are here, we are completely revising our company now, law now to have a very, very simple model, uh, particularly for companies, not PLCs, smaller companies that would be um, limited by shares, and we're introducing a whole new scheme where you wouldn't have to have such complex architecture or complex arrangements for, for, for um, fulfilment, and I think that's one of the ways that I think we can make the bureaucracy l less. There is an interesting, you know, ten points under the Small Business Act which uh, allows countries to benchmark themselves against best practice in areas like entrepreneurship, administration administration, access to finance, skills and innovation. And I think they do, you know, help countries like ourselves just to, to learn from others who might be do, doing uh, better. Um, 
John asked the, uh, the $64,000 question is what else can we do differently? Uh, I'll leave that one maybe to Trina, but I think one of the things, the insights that she has mentioned and I think that we need, do need to work on is the, the explosion of social media and the, the growing influence in, in, in ICT tools generally in consumer decisions. When you see only 23% of SMEs even online with a capacity to trade, you're pretty sure that you're missing out on massive of opportunity. Uh, now that's one of the things we're committed to, to get more uh, trading very actively, but uh, Trina has taken it a step much further. It's not just trading in line, but seeing actually how you, uh, how peop how those consumers form their opinion. Uh, it's, it's a very rich vein, I think, uh, to, do, to do differently. Uh, I, I, I think all of us will be interested in looking at, you know, the different models, the Public Investment Bank in, in, in France, Vince Cable is looking at uh, initiatives in that space. We have a lot of funds now out there, two and a half billion in funds, trying to fill this non-bank finance or non-traditional bank financing uh, void. What works? And I think there will be a lot of, you know, I think a lot of learning to be to be done. I share Damien's view that you know youth entrepreneurship is certainly a potential. This last year we recognised that women were severely underrepresented in startups, and we had a targeted initiative at. at at women, which has been very successful and massively oversubscribed, uh, and it would encourage us to look at tailoring to specific underrepresentative groups, and maybe, as one of the, the first speakers said, working uh, with, 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 with uh, I think, our speaker from Denmark, you know, working with the education system to, to have better models at, at the point of uh, at which people make, might make these decisions. Um, and Joanna said, I mean, long-term sustainability is, is, is crucial. I, I mean, I think one of the issues, like for ourselves, food is going to be a big opportunity as we move, you know, as quotas are removed in 2015, and we're developing this origin green. In other words, everything has to be traceable. We're not going to build a successful food industry unless we have an absolute sustainability at its foundation. And I think it's an important element of, of any uh, business strategy to recognise that consumers can leave you at the, you know, in a me social media alert uh, world, they can leave you very quickly. So, you know, standards and sustainability uh, are absolutely crucial to, to protect your reputation. Uh, and I think Joanna, Joanna has put her finger on an important uh, aspect of entrepreneurship. Uh, thank you, Minister. And we turn to Trina now again. Oh dear, I said too much at dinner last night. Um, I, I think getting to John's question about think differently, for me, an, a leader is a person who deals in hope. If you can give people hope, they will follow you anywhere. They will do things that will surprise themselves. They will go 110% beyond what they, what they think they can do. And in terms of inspiring entrepreneurs, you're really giving people hope that if they open a business, if they take that plunge, that they will still be in business next month, two months' time, three months' time, that they've made the right decision in terms of supporting themselves, their community, their family, the people that they will end up employing. And I think how you do that, I mean, we've, we've talked about creative clusters, fostering, cultureship of entrepreneurship, uh, embracing technology, access to finance, mentoring, all of those are really great things. But one of the key things for me, I think, is almost role models, showing them people who have taken that plunge and who have now made it through to the other side and who have businesses that are doing well and who are which are succeeding in this current economic environment. And we can do that not just in terms of it's great you know that people go and they speak and they address a small hall or a small conference or a university or their local school but we should be using technology to make it a wider reach why just have a small university conference when you can webcast it and have it available online as a resource to six seven twelve fifteen different universities around europe we should be using technology to get that message out there and to use the broadcasting mediums that we have because broadcasting as itself is, is just, it's changed so much in terms of how people access information. If we can inspire them to do it, not just in terms of setting up their own businesses, but in terms of working with and even existing businesses and becoming a bit more entrepreneurial in their approach, I think it would be an amazing revolution for everybody. Uh, thanks for that, Trina. And now we have uh, Mr. Joanna Drake. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I like what Katrina said about you know giving hope uh, and being leaders, being a leader and giving hope. And I think this is what 
the European Union owes to its young, um, to its young people. Um, I think we, you know, in the 50 years ago, we had the idea of selling uh, peace through the European Union and actually making peace through the European Union. Um, I think everybody takes that for granted now. The same way we take for granted SMEs and jobs, and that they are, our young people will always be there uh, to create those jobs in the future. But I think we cannot assume that anymore, and we need to give that hope. And, and I think this is why we need to really take out all that we can that is good in our citizens in terms of being, having more of a competitive economy. We have to lead by giving hope, but also by giving the tools. And I think this is the key. And this brings me to the first question that was, that was made by Mr. Odell from Sweden. And he asked about the internal market. And I agree with Minister Bruton. Definitely the internal market is not used to its full potential. It's 50 years plus that has existed, but it's still not used to its own potential. I think for the benefit of SMEs and entrepreneurs, we need to be a bit more, more proactive. I mentioned before, you know, the protective part, the thing small first, reducing emissive burden, protecting the interests of SMEs. But I think we need to look at the internal market from a different angle, different perspective. Let's see what the internal market can do for SMEs. Trina has mentioned uh, digital entrepreneurship. Somebody else has mentioned internationalization. Um, I can give you a recent example, the late payments directive. It, it was because member states could actually come to an agreement on a harmonized um, prescriptive period within which both public and private uh, companies would have to pay uh, SMEs uh, on time, which is, by the way, one of the biggest reasons for the bankruptcy. So isn't that a, a more proactive approach of how the internal market legislation could actually come uh, to the rescue uh, of SMEs? But let's be a little bit more proactive, perhaps, and think less defensive. Um, on the point of, um, of, of green, the green market that, um, that Joanna mentioned earlier, um, I would like to point out that, yes, uh, there is a market out there um, which is still, I would say, made unexploitable uh, by SMEs. And at the same time, we are not um, capitalizing on the win-win situation of having more SMEs which are more involved in the green uh, in greening uh, the, the economy, in greening uh, the world uh, around us, making themselves more responsible, at the same time partaking uh, of that market. We will be um, coming up also with a plan later on this year on how, on a number of measures of how SMEs could actually have not only access to the green market, but themselves become more resource efficient, which I think um, is, as I said, a win-win situation that we need to exploit and capitalize further on. Um, the long-term financing, um, I just wanted to mention that, of course, um, looking the way you look at structural funds uh, is a way of how you could look at long-term financing for SMEs. We are working also with our colleagues in Digi Regio of how structural funds can also be used for the long-term competitiveness of SMEs. Uh, the challenge there is to how to change uh, the common perception of how structural funds could be used in order to channel them into projects that really feed into and fuel the long-term sustainability of competitiveness of SMEs. Um, but there is also, uh, one has to address also at European level, um, uh, the venture, the big vacuum, I would say, that there still is in, in the venture capital market. Uh, only this month, as we speak, um, there has been an agreement reached on uh, the venture capital passport, you might have heard about this, which will allow venture capitals in Europe to market their funds across the EU. It will not save the world, but it will be a good step toward in the right direction. Um, last point about the setting up of companies, I agree. Um, it is not only about how fast we set up companies. I think the Entrepreneurship Action Plan mentions that as you know, a first step in the challenge, let's not complicate uh, the setting up of company itself. But the more important step is number two step, which is how fast can we actually license the companies um, to be operative? More important than that, how are we long-term investing 
uh, in their sustainability via perhaps uh, flexible uh, and more friendly uh, measures for taxation on labour, social security schemes, etc., which of course the member states there will have to uh, adapt according to uh, their own realities on the ground. Uh, thanks for that, Joanna. Um, that concludes uh, session two. I'd like to thank the sp our three speakers and all the delegates who contributed to the debate. It was very informative and very interesting, and certainly a lot of information we can, we can uh, talk over there over lunch as well. So buffet lunch will be served in the castle, and you'll be directed by the staff to the venue as you depart the, com the conference hall. I now suspend the proceedings, but just to say we will resume at 2 o'clock sharp uh, for our final session in the afternoon. So again, thank you very much, and thank our three speakers here at the chapel. Thank you. Thank you.